So there are various diagnostic tools for the obstetrical anal sphincter assessment and we include the traditional methods of just doing a parietal examination. We have the endoanal ultrasound and it looks at the morphology of the sphincter. It has got a good sensitivity, good accuracy, but it doesn't have reproducibility or non-operator dependence and intraoperative views can be done with an endoanal ultrasound. Now, anorectal manometry assesses the function of the anal sphincter. It has got a good sensitivity and accuracy. It is also reproducible and it is non-operator dependence and it cannot be used in the operation theater. Now, MRI also looks at the morphology of the anal sphincter. It has got a good sensitivity and good accuracy and good reproducibility. It is also non-operator dependent and but it cannot be used in the operation theater. Other experimental methods of assessing the OSS include TPUS that is transperineal ultrasound or the translabial ultrasound and this looks at the morphology of the anal sphincter. It has got good sensitivity and accuracy but it is not reproducible and it does it it is operator dependent and uh, transperineal ultrasound can be used in operative theatres. Impedance spectrography is a new method. It looks at the morphology of the sphincter. It has got a good sensitivity and accuracy. It is also reproducible and it is non-operator dependent but it cannot be used inside the operation theatre while repairing the anal sphincter. So the role of imaging in the early diagnosis of obstetrical anal sphincter damage is further limited by the risk of incorrect interpretation of images and consequent potential overestimation of their occurrences. So the detection rate of uh, anal sphincter injury has significantly increased since the introduction of the endoanal ultrasound in the assessment of anal sphincter following vaginal delivery. So now the OSS incidence it was 11 percent but with the use of uh, endoanal ultrasound the detection rate is th in 36 percent of women. But it is unclear whether these findings represent any clinically relevant effects of the anal sphincter. There is no consensus as to which women benefit from additional imaging and imaging decisions are based on provider preferences and equipment availability. Coming to endoanal ultrasound, it is the gold standard method for detection of both the external and internal anal sphincters as well as for the evaluation of injury site and extent of damage. The three-dimensional endoanal ultrasound, the 3DE endoanal ultrasound permits the detection of even small sphincter injuries which are otherwise invisible or misinterpreted on doing a parietal examination. Now, endoanal ultrasound is an accurate, highly sensitive and a safe way of assessing the perineum for anal sphincter injury with none or minimal discomfort for the mother depending on the size of the probe chosen for the exam. It also allows to assess which injuries are more likely to benefit from a surgical repair and to identify the exact location of the snap tends of anal So, it's a site-specific repair can be done for the anal sphincter. Potentially, it has also a play a role in the intraoperative setting. So, endoanal ultrasound can also be used during surgery to have a look at what fibers needs to be repaired. So, though its role has not been clearly determined yet, this endoanal ultrasound can be used in early follow-up after anal sphincter repair or obstetrical anal sphincter injuries to identify patients at high risk for long-term complications who may benefit from early referral to specialist clinics. So, endoanal ultrasound may also serve to, as a helpful tool to plan the mode of delivery in the woman at risk for developing incontinence with future pregnancy. So, here we see an endoanal ultrasound. We see here the inner anal sphincter. We see here the external anal sphincter and we see that the inner anal sphincter is having a gap. So, it is a damaged inner anal sphincter. And the area between the posterior wall of vagina and the anterior wall of anus is called as the anovaginal septum. So, this thickness is important. We also need to look at the external anal sphincter. Now, coming to another modality that is transperineal ultrasound. Now, transperineal ultrasound considers application of a high frequency curved array transducer on the perineum. And transperineal ultrasound can also be done translabially to assess the functional anatomy of the pelvic floor and detect anal sphincter abnormalities. In comparison to endoanal ultrasound, it has the advantage of being more accessible. It is less invasive because you don't put it inside the anus, but instead you are just doing it transperineally. And it is more acceptable to the patient being exoanal. For such reason, reasons, transperineal ultrasound has become increasingly popular in recent years. On the other hand, the lack of panoramic view and worse tissue discrimination when compared to endoanal ultrasound have so far prevented a wider 
spread of this method in clinical practice. But you do not get a panoramic view and we cannot uh, look at the tissues and the tissues are not differentiated properly. So this is a picture of endo. Here also we are seeing that this is a ring of hyperechogenicity surrounding the thin hypoechogenic ring of internal anal sphincter. The mucosal folds of the anal canal appear in the center of the image as the innermost layer. So these are the mucosal folds. So these are the mucosal folds and there is an inner ecogenicity. Inner uh, hypoechoic ring is the, in, this is the inner anal sphincter. So this hypoechoic ring is the inner anal sphincter and um, the external anal sphincter is seen as a ring of hyperechogenicity. So this is hyperechogenicity is the, this is the external anal sphincter. This is the internal anal sphincter, this is the rectal mucosa and the folds. So here we are seeing a normal sphincter in a uh, transperineal ultrasound. Now this is a damaged sphincter. So we see that rectal mucosa is intact here, but the inner ecogenicity is broken here. So inner ecogen, inner uh, outer is also broken. So we have got a defect of the inner and the outer sphincters. So this is a transperineal ultrasound image of a damaged anal sphincter complex and a full thickness defect of both the sphincter. So both the concentric rings are lost. Here both the concentric rings are lost or interrupted.